Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. So it's been so much stuff going on as of recent. Um, P M B Rock was recently killed in L A. So I have been wanting to hit on this topic for a few days, but I kind of wanted to wait until more information came out. Um, I think the really sad part about this, I've been talking about this forever on my channel, you know, like the constant flossing, um, the way social media almost, you know, it makes you feel like you're invincible and, you know, like everybody just loves you and things like that. And what people don't understand is just because you have tons of followers, you know, tons of people, you know, liking your post, it does not mean that everyone is a fan, okay? Because just like the fans are watching and they want to know your every move and what you're up to and, you know, what you're wearing and what your house looks like and all that shit, the wolves are also watching. I've always said this. That's why I never agreed with flex culture. Flex culture never made any sense to me because, again, you're literally inviting people to come and jack you. And it's gotten so bad in LA at this point, you know, where so many people, you know, famous or not famous. I mean, we've all seen the news videos of people just running into stores, you know, robbing stores, robbing jewelry stores, taking bags and running out. People, you know, robbing people in broad daylight. It is getting bad out here, not just LA, but I'm child everywhere. Okay. And so, you know, um, he seemed like a really cool guy, very, you know, down to earth, very low key. But again, that flossing is basically an invitation for people to come and help themselves. And it's, it was just sad watching that video and watching this young man, you know, he, he went there to go eat breakfast with his family and to meet somebody and then to be watching him on the ground, shaking, losing all this blood and, and the staff, they're confused. They're trying to figure out what to do. Um, I know a lot of the talk was, did the baby's mother set him up? Because PN, PNB had did an interview recently with DJ Academics. And in that interview, he was basically saying that he was almost robbed a few weeks ago. And he had did the interview two weeks ago with DJ Academics, but a few weeks before then, he was almost robbed. And he was talking about it. And he was saying, you know, how he kind of got a bad feeling you know, he wanted to leave. His girl was acting like she didn't want to leave. Then he finally told her, no, we need to leave now. Then as they're leaving, she pulls over into like some type of, you know, strip mall and wanted to go shopping, you know, just kind of being a little bit careless as to like the danger that they're in. And I think that's what a lot of people do not understand. Again, I, I get the point of fame and, you know, people being enamored with you and, oh my God, I want to take your picture and I love your music. But people also have to be aware that there's two sides, you know, and that's to everything in this world. There's a yin and yang, there's a good and bad. So for her to pull over and feel like that was the time to go shopping, to me, is just, it, it's almost like, what the hell are you thinking? Like, if I'm, you know, at some point in time, you have to have discernment. You have to be able to read each other's energy, especially when you're in a relationship. And if my man looks worried and concerned, shopping is the last thing on my mind. We're going to head straight home. We're going to try and figure this out. And so, again, they pull over. She's going shopping. And those same guys from, I guess, earlier, you know, went into the store and was kind of accosting them. And then he said, you know, they went back into the um they went back into the parking lot and he kind of, you know, let them know, you know, he's not one to play with, you know, quote unquote. And then so then to see a few weeks later him being killed. And so one of the things that people were saying that got him killed was because she was posting the location. And supposedly I had seen the 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 screenshot where she was off of Instagram for a while because he took her password. He said, I don't want you going on Instagram. You be posting too much. Um, so he took her password. And so she had just recently gotten access to her Instagram page. And what she did was basically post the location of the chicken and waffles. So a lot of people were blaming her, saying that she's a setup queen and all this stuff. 
But to me, at the end of the day, she still lost her child's father. She still lost somebody very close to her. And now more information is coming out that she was not the only one to post her location. See, this is why it's good to wait for more information to come out before jumping the gun. Because now it's coming out that he too had posted his location. Now, they said one of the chefs or somebody who worked at the restaurant watched him post his location. I don't know if he posted his location on social media, but they said that he also posted his location. So it wasn't just her. So let me go ahead and um, play you guys the video. I have a few videos here, child. Okay, here we go that he was targeted because of an Instagram post. There were actually a couple, one from the rapper himself in the back parking lot when they first got here, here, giving somebody enough time to get here and kill him. And then another one from his girlfriend when they were sitting at the table. The restaurant is back open today, but obviously a much different vibe inside. People who work here, extremely upset. He was a guest in our community and was gunned down gunned down by cowardly act. Local city rights leaders call on LA City Council to offer a reward to catch PNB Rock's killer. It was a brazen murder in broad daylight. The rapper from Philly was eating lunch with his girlfriend, who's the mother of one of his two daughters. It was 1.30 p.m. Monday at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles on Manchester and Maine in South LA. LAPD says an armed black man in a mask went up to their table, exchanged words, shot PNB multiple times, stole his chain and a couple other pieces of his jewelry and then ran out to a getaway car. Witnesses desperately gave the rapper CPR, but he didn't make it. Don't wear the jewelry in any place out the doors right now. There's a lot of crazy people out there. And believe me, crazy people are desperate. They don't target just rappers. They target anybody with money. The 30-year-old, whose real name was Rakim Hashim Allen, was an established artist known by one of his hits, Selfish, that peaked at number 51 on the Billboard Hot 100 in 2016. That same year, Rolling Stone included him in its list of 10 artists you need to know. We, as African-American men, need to stop killing one another. We need to stop pulling the trigger. There are better ways to handle different types of issues. Fans have been coming here all day, dropping off candles and flowers, setting up a memorial for the rapper who they loved so much and who had such a bright future ahead of him. Now, the chief is confident that somebody out there knows who these suspects are, the murderer and the man in the getaway car, and he's really asking for the public's help before they kill somebody else. Now, there is possibly going to be a reward. It sounds like city council is on board, so as soon as we get that information, we will... All right, so let me come back on this screen. So you guys just heard the news that it wasn't just her who posted the location, but he did as well. So if he posted the location first, that might have made her feel comfortable. Like, well, he's posting the location, so let me post the location. And, you know, to me, it just doesn't make sense the way that some people are moving. Um, let's, let's be very blunt and honest here. They're not in Malibu eating at Nobu. They're not eating at Mr. Chow's. You guys are literally at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. Why do we need to know that? Like, I, I guess, I don't know if I'm being cynical, um, but that's just how I think. Like, I, like, they're, like I, you know, I get the whole posting of food, but I thought people are only really intrigued to see people posting high-end food. Like, I don't, there's nothing high end or interesting about chicken and waffles, just keeping it real. You know, I feel like at some point in time, people need to just live in the moment. Everything does not need to go on social media. Everybody doesn't know what, need to know what you're doing at every moment of the day. It's no one's business. And the problem with social media is that it's conditioned us to feel like we have to stay connected. We have to know, you know, what everybody's doing and they need to know what we're doing. And it's okay to just have your peace. It's okay to just go eat breakfast with your loved ones. And the only people who know in the world where you guys are at, or just you, that person and the wait staff, you know, and you know, this is not to beat this woman up because like I said, I'm sure she feels bad enough, especially with the internet attacking her and accusing her of setting them up and everything else. So this is not to attack her, but like I always tell people, learn from the mistakes of other people. So that way you're not destined to repeat them. 
Okay, I don't say that just for my health. I say that because this is true. We watch what Pop Smoke did. He got a bunch of gifts and, you know, he was on social media flossing the gifts, not realizing that the address was being shown on some of those gifts. Also, when they were taking pictures in front of the home, you know, you could see the address and people are pulling up. Um, recently, not even two weeks ago in L.A., there was a young man. He was another rapper. Uh, he was a white rapper. What's his name? Wack. Wacko. Wacko. That is his name. He was recently shot and almost lost his life. And by the grace of God, it was him. And I think one of his producers, they were shot at like almost 20 something times. He was hit six times. The producer or manager, I believe, was hit about 10 times. Um, by the grace of God, they survived. I'm going to play you all this clip here. And this was in L.A. Just right before this whole situation with PMB. Rapper PNV Rock, another artist who survived a recent attack, relives what happened to him. What is going on on the streets of L.A.? I'm with news reporter Jory Rand, live in downtown Los Angeles, with more on our top story tonight. Jory. Mark, detectives with the LAPD have a lot of work cut out for them. Not only are they looking for whoever fired 26 shots at one rapper, they're now looking for whoever killed another rapper yesterday. The common denominator here is blame. These artists targeted for their jewelry. They feel like they're under siege. Yet another young artist lost to gun violence in South L.A. The rapper PNB Rock, whose real name was Rakim Allen, was shot and killed Monday at this Roscoe story and attempted robbery. It's just a, a tragedy. It's just a real, very, very big tragedy. The 30-year-old had collaborated with artists like Chance the Rapper and Ed Sheeran. He was known for wearing expensive jewelry, and his killer showed up at the restaurant shortly after Allen's girlfriend posted their location to Instagram. The LAPD says he demanded jewelry, and the two got into an altercation when the fatal shots were fired. This killing brings back painful memories of the slaying of Nipsey Hussle three years ago. It's left many fans with this kind of hopeless attitude. You're going to get shot for no reason. You're going to get robbed for no reason. Just don't even come around. All the L.A. rappers don't come around it to the L.A. hood areas. It's a wrap. And if you do... Keep your jury at home. Local rapper Wacko the Kid learned that lesson all too well. He was ambushed two weeks ago in North Hollywood in an attempted follow-home robbery. He wound up getting shot six times, his sound engineer ten. It's time to move accordingly. L.A. is seeming like it's the 90s again. Even before seeing what happened to PNB Rock, Wacko says he feels lucky to be alive. There was still a tube draining fluid from his bullet wounds when we spoke with him tonight. 26 shots were fired that night, all six that hit him missed vital organs. He says he'll have security with him from now on in public. I feel like everybody with money is under attack in L.A. I feel like it's a rough time and a lot of people don't have money. So the people that show money and do all that stuff like that, yeah, everyone's under attack. Celebrities need to be very careful right now. All right. So this was him a few weeks before he got shot. I believe. Hold on. I had to go crazy for my boy Wacko, man. Check the details. Yes, sir. Ski. Four rows of diamonds on the size. Over 600 grams. You know what I mean? Neck heavy for showy. All bussy. VVSs. Come on, man. Stop playing with man. the kids. And you know he did the grills. And you know he did the watch. The 80 piece for my brother Dumani, man. He's going too crazy, bro. Good business, my brother. I appreciate you every time. All right. So let me come back on this screen here. So that was him a few weeks before. Then he ended up getting, he was pulling up to his house with the producer, sound engineer, and he was ambushed by a bunch of masked men. The crazy thing with, with Wacko, the kid situation is they asked for his jury and money. And before he could even attempt to take it off, they shot him. So it's like they're not even trying to necessarily rob people. They're trying to shoot you. They're like trying to take your life. And then they'll just rob you after the fact. You know that. So for him to be shot six times and survive is definitely a blessing. You know, and I think the saddest part of all of this is that everybody's saying, well, you know, it's L.A., you know, niggas got to check in. And, um, you know, it's L.A., you shouldn't have been over there eating in Manchester. Everybody knows not to eat in the hood. Everybody knows they got to check in. Everybody, Why is that the mentality? 
Like, just think about how sick that is, right? We say things like support black businesses. Most black businesses tend to be in the hood, right? So you go to go support businesses in the inner cities, but then in the same breath, you're saying, well, you shouldn't ate there anyways. You shouldn't have been there. You shouldn't have been supporting that business. Oh, well, y'all need to eat in the Valley. Y'all need to eat at Mr. Child's. You know, it's, it's a really, it's a really sick mentality that we're almost punishing people for just living their life. And granted, we live in a messed up world. You know, we should be, if, if I want to put on every piece of jewelry that I own and, you know, fur coats, I don't own none of that shit. But if I wanted to, I should be able to just, you know, wear a chinchilla coat and a bunch of ice and, you know, a, a whole Chanel outfit, some Dior boots and walk to the south side of Minneapolis right around where George Floyd got killed in the hood and just post up. In a perfect world, I should be able to just sit there and, and, and chill in my Chanel outfit and, and nobody should harass me. People should just give me props for looking fly. Well, that's not the world that we live in. And that's messed up because people work hard for their money and it's nobody's. It's not your right to try and take from somebody who worked hard to get to where they're at. You know, so it's almost like we then turn around and and chastise the people who are just living their life. But again, we don't live in a perfect world, so you have to move smart. You cannot be teasing the wolves on social media, as messed up as that is. No, he wasn't bragging and saying, nah, 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 nah. I got a new necklace with a bunch of ice and y'all are broke. He wasn't doing that, you know, not like they were doing in the damn uh, late 90s and shit, did he? Um, he wasn't doing that. But again, the same way the fans are watching and hitting like and giving you hearts, the wolves are also watching. Let's not forget in Gwinnett County, in Georgia, there are whole cliques of guys who all they do is sit on social media and they sit back and they sip tea and they take notes on what these celebrities are posting. Okay. There's a whole ring of people who do this. So every time Marla was posting and trying to make people feel bad because they don't have the latest Fendi and they don't have Fendi on speed dial and they don't have this, this and that. Guess who else was watching? It wasn't just, you know, the jealous ass brokies. You know, they like to call them, but it was also the wolves watching. That is why the wolves went and kicked in her door trying to steal all that shit that she was flossing on social media. And that goes for a lot of people. It was it was getting really bad in Atlanta for a while. Now that new DA, the female, I forget her name. She's always on the news. Um, she's cracking down and I don't blame her. She's cracking down, you know, and I think something is going to have to change. Because it's one thing when you're robbing people out on the street. It's another thing when you're coming into people's homes. I mean, that is insane. She had her nephews there. Anything could have happened, you know. And so, like I, like I said before, um, people have to move smart. It's not about, you know, oh, you're just mad. I don't care. Like, it's, it's not about being angry. But it does make me mad when people lose their lives senselessly over foolishness like this. That man was 30 years old and had his whole life ahead of him. And to lose his life in that manner is insane to me. So when I say people need to move smart and move accordingly, that's real shit. Okay. You just had one rapper who was shot at and thank God he survived. You had another rapper who was killed. You had so many people's homes that are getting broken into and, and kicked in and things like that. So people have to move accordingly, but it's really sad that you know, that's the mentality out here that people are saying things like, oh, you need to check in and oh, you need to do this and that. Like in what other genre I'm trying to figure out in what other genre do people need to check in? Do these same people because L.A. is Hollywood, right? So when Ben Affleck or Tom Cruise or Justin Bieber, when they come to L.A., who do they check in with? It's OK, I'll wait. Oh, they don't have to check in. Oh, oh, so Taylor Swift can just move freely through L.A. Also, when Justin Bieber went to Compton, it was all good. Oh, so it's only for black people who need to check in. It's sad. It, it's really sick. It's, it's a really sick mentality. And people keep perpetuating that. And it's sad because, again, um, last time I checked, None of these people own those neighborhoods. So what are y'all checking into? They don't own anything there. You know, 
let's call it what it is, everybody. Okay, I, I you know, I'm, I'm gonna keep it real during this stream. It's, it's called friendly extortion. You know, y'all like to use cute names like, oh, it's checking in and checking. No, it's called friendly extortion. You want to come this way? You want to go to this club? You got to grease my palms. That's what it's called. It's not checking in. It's friendly extortion. And it seems to only apply to black people, mainly rappers. And until rappers start speaking about this shit and keeping it real and not, and, and not okaying this, it's going to keep happening. You know, so it, it's, it's really sad. It's really sad. I don't think they do this in New York. I could be wrong. I don't, you know, I, I go to New York every now and then, but I, I don't know because I don't roam through the projects. I don't know if they do that in the projects in New York, but I know in LA it's a really big thing where they expect you to check in and, and cut a check. But again, you know, those are just cute words. It's just, it's extortion. That's exactly what it is. I would respect it, honestly, because, you know, I'm not mad at nobody's hustle. I would respect it if you guys made everyone check in and be friendly, you know, just, you know, have a friendly extortion with everyone. I would love to see Tom Cruise check in. I would love to see Taylor Swift check in. The Kardashians, have they ever checked in? They've been in the hood a few times filming their show. Did they check in? Maybe they did. I don't know. Maybe they did. But it just seems like, you know what I'm saying, the whole checking in, checking in mentality only applies to black people. And I think that's sad. It's really sad. Somebody said, nope, not in New York. I know that's right. <laughs> Look at all the New Yorkers. All you see is Timberland boots. <laughs> New York is like, nah, we're not doing that. Um, let me go ahead and read some of these super chats here. Um, Monique Lowell sent $299. Oh, my God, sis. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. You always show this channel nothing but love and support. So thank you. Thank you so much. She's just awesome, man. She comes through all the time. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Book of Ronan. What's up, Ronan? He sent 20. He says, much love to you, T. Keep winning. I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You know, I'm going to keep grinding and doing what I got to do, honey. So thank you. Um, Erin Moore sent 199. She says, hey, T, love you and your channel. Thank you so much, Erin. Appreciate you, sis. Um, let's see here. CB says, oh, my God, T, love you. I was bored. Well, welcome. I'm glad you made it on time. Thank you for coming through. Um, let's see. Leah Clark sent $9.99. She says, keep shining. You always brighten my day. Thank you so much, Leah. Appreciate you. DJ e, uh, DJ e says, I know this could have happened at any Roscoe's, but everybody here for the most part knows not to go to that location. Yeah, you know, and that's what everybody's saying, but it's sad because when you think about when people say, don't go to that location, don't go to that location. What about the people who work there? What about the person who owns it? You know what I mean? Because it's not their fault that all those bad elements are happening around their restaurant. You know, and it's sad because you would think locations like that would be able to get extra help from the police and make sure that, you know, a lot of those bad elements and a lot of those bad things are not happening at those locations. But I just it's just really sad because, again, there, those are people's people live in those neighborhoods. You know, why can't they go out and go enjoy chicken and waffles or whatever they want to enjoy without saying, I know this is up the street and it's five minutes away, but it's so dangerous. I'm going to drive 30 minutes into the valley to go eat. And that's really the mentality in L.A. I don't stop off and eat anything in the hood in L.A. Rarely, if I don't think I've ever, like, even if I've gone out to like Compton or Inglewood, it's to go see people, to go to my destination and leave. I don't stop off at any restaurants because that's kind of the mentality that's kind of ingrained. Like you just don't eat. You don't stop at these spots. If you're hungry, wait till you get to the valley. Because it'll be a little bit safer. And it's really sad because I think at this point, instead of just saying, you know, don't eat there, don't eat there, don't eat there. Because again, that business is losing money because of the bad reputation. But it's not necessarily that business's fault. It's the elements and the people outside of that business. So hopefully something gets done and areas like that get cleaned up and the crime comes down. Because, you know, eventually these businesses will close down and they won't be in the hood. And then you have to go further and further out to get your food, to get groceries and things like that. So it's really sad. It's a, it's a trickle down effect. 
Somebody said the police are always at the Waffle House, especially the one in Atlanta, honey. Police stay up there at that Waffle House. Hey, you home? You untwisted your locks? Oh, they look nice. No, they're still alive. It's just not too short. You know I'm live? Come say hi. Come show them your locks. My son just got home. They look nice. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Oh, wait. Can they see me? Yeah, they can see. I'm live. There's like 8,000 people in here. What was the way? Oh. Yeah. All right. Bye. Sorry, mommy moment. He said he had wanted to, he had, he did some two strand twist. So he said this girl was offering to untwist it because he wanted it curly or whatever. I'm like, what girl? What girl about to do your hair? So he had untwisted it. So it, it, it turned out nice. Okay. Little girl. <laughs> y'all ever mess with my hey nephew? He cute. Y'all, y'all leave my kids alone. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, look how seduced it one girl, right? She did a good job, okay? <laughs> uh, let me finish being these super chats, y'all. <laughs> um, let's see here. Fila Z Media says, hey T, hair's looking gorgeous. Question, are you still looking for a video editor? editor? I sent you my info. Yeah, I've gotten a lot of emails. Right now, I do have one. Um, and they're working out pretty well. So I'm just trying to create as much content as possible. So I'm working on a bunch of content. And so we're kind of doing the edits together. But if I end up needing more, I would definitely be in touch. Um, oh, God. <laughs> I am, though. I am looking. I'm still, I've gotten the emails and I'm going through different people who said that they write, you know what I'm saying, crime stories and stuff like that. So I am still looking. I have one girl. She's done really good. So I'm trying to stick with her. I try to give this other guy a chance, a total waste of time. Um, just copied and pasted a bunch of BS, just, just nonsense. So sometimes people are very hit and miss. <laughs> so I'm still trying to figure it out, but um, I'm going to do some more recording this weekend for the True Crime channel. So I can't wait. So thank you for that. Um, let's see here. Phineas446 says, hey, Auntie, what kind? Oh, well, this is kind of off topic. What are your thoughts on the Little Mermaid remake and the racism? I'm going to talk about that near the end of the video. So trust me, I'm going to hit on that. Hence the hair. Under the sea. <laughs> I'm going to hit on that, though. We got I got a lot to say about that. Um, Let's see here. Uh, Rona Full says, hey, T, are you going to announce when the Discord opens again? I got the boot. And I was bl I was gonna blame the algorithm. <laughs> There's no algorithm on Discord. Let me see here. What else she wrote? Um, but it was me forgetting to update my new credit card. Um, email. Send me an email, and then I'll send your email over tomorrow. Now, so just send me an email. Um, the Discord will be open again. I'm thinking closer to October. So that's the thing. It's just a lot of steps. And I just like, again, like I said, I'm very particular. I don't want everybody flooding in there. So we'll probably open again since in October because it hasn't been open since the summertime. And I know a lot of people have been wanting to like join and stuff like that. But y'all know I'm a very protected child. That is family right there. We had a really good meeting. Y'all had me in a damn three hour meeting yesterday. Folks was crying. And oh, yesterday's meeting was very emotional. It was very emotional. But I'm so glad that everybody is doing better and was able to get that off y'all's chest. That was a long three hour meeting. But I think, you know, we needed that. It's a lot going on in this world. We, we needed that. Um, so let me see here. Camille H. Oh, hold on. This pair says YouTube won't let me send any super chats. Yep. YouTube stay hating. Thank you, Camille. Appreciate you for joining the membership. Um, black girl says, damn, he's fine. T who fine my child. <laughs> they said you fine. Tay. <laughs> now y'all got him cheesing his stuff. Child. <laughs> A lot of my tea sippers met my kids. They, he was at my birthday party, and then when I brought him down to Atlanta, so them was, them was my boys. Um, let's see here. Miss Let's Go says rappers love wearing multiple diamond chains. The cost of one of those chains could pay salary for a personal security guard for a year. Mm, that part, and you know that's the crazy thing with like people, you know, showing off jewelry, going out into the hood. 
you definitely got to know your environment. And when you're wearing jewelry that costs more than some people's cars, as much as somebody's down payment on a home, those are not the locations to wear a bunch of flashy jewelry. Like I said, in, in a perfect world, you should be able to go to skid row, drip down, and nobody should touch you. But we don't live in a perfect world. And we have to be realistic about the moves that we make and where we go. Um, it's just, it's not worth it. You know, there's nothing wrong with buying it. There's nothing wrong with buying yourself nice things. I would never say that. That's stupid. You know what I'm saying? It's okay to splurge on yourself. If your thing is jewelry, buy your jewelry. As long as you work hard for it, nobody should dictate what you do with your money. If your thing is designer, uh, shit, uh, drip down, okay? Do you. But just understand that if you're going to wear that stuff, be very mindful of the environment that you're going into. Because I'm gonna tell y'all something, it's getting worse out here, okay? Um, I don't know if a lot of you guys are aware of this, I talked about this yesterday in the Discord meeting, but there are more um, strikes going on. Um, the railroad station right now, Amtrak, if y'all don't know, they are gone on strike. And a lot of people think that Amtrak just, you know, is for public transportation. It's just to move people. What people don't understand is that Amtrak also moves goods and services. Okay. A lot of things in this country are moved by train as well as trucks. We're already having a shortage on truckers and things like that. So now with the Amtrak workers um, striking and protesting, expect that there's going to be even less things in the store and more things going up in price. I know there's so many distractions going on right now. Cardi B, Nicki Minaj, all the rap girls beefing. And that's cute. I sip on that tea as well. But the real tea that I make sure to stay edified with is what's going to affect me. Because at the end of the day, uh, if some shit goes down and the, and, the, and the price of groceries jump up, you know, 50% and gas goes back up and we're not able to get stuff, Cardi, Nicki, and all these, you know, celebrities, they're going to be fine. So while y'all are obsessing over their situation, make sure you understand what's going on in the real world because this is affecting people. They were supposed to initially start the strike on Friday. They started yesterday. On top of that, in Minnesota, over 15,000 nurses on strike at all of our major hospitals. Gone. So right now I'm trying to keep myself as healthy as possible because if I go to the hospital, there's really no nurses there to take care of me. So it's a lot of stress. It's a lot of stress going on. So I think people need to be very, very aware of what is going on, not just nationwide, but globally and understand people's desperations, right? Understand that people are losing their jobs. People are not being paid what they're worth. And it's very scary when you're talking about nurses going on strike. When right now crime is up in the Twin Cities, shootings are up, jackings are up. So now you go to the ER because you've been shot. There's no nurses there to take care of you. You're more, you're more likely to die. Those resources are not there. So it's getting very scary. So do you really want to go into communities and into situations where you're good? You're eating well. And people in those situations are not doing well. The wolves are out. You know what I'm saying? People are not getting paid their worth. And they're tired of turning around and seeing people who do the bare minimum making all this money and then flossing and throwing it in their face. So I think at this point, people need to like really understand what is going on and people's mentalities. And while it's not fair, it's not okay. I'm not condoning any of it because I don't care if you are poor and destitute. It doesn't give you the right to rob somebody of their goods, to take somebody's life. That is not an excuse. But I also say that people who are well off and if you're doing okay, understand that everybody is not as blessed. It doesn't make them a bad person. It doesn't mean that they're undeserving. Just understand that people are dealing with different situations in their life. Those people at Roscoe's are only making but so much an hour. You walking in there with $100,000 or whatever worth of jewelry, not the best thing. Because as quiet as it's kept and not trying to be messy or starting no shit, how we don't know wouldn't somebody at Roscoe's?
You mean to tell me everybody there is a good old Christian? Somebody at Roscoe's could have picked up the phone and texted their homeboy and said, guess who's here with all this jury on? I'm just saying. Matter of fact, there was a story one time. A lady, her and her husband, they owned their own business. She was going to the bank to go um, get money, you know, for their store. So they could, you know, give customers cash back, whatever. So I think she took about 70 grand worth of cash out the bank. The banker, you know what I'm saying? You're supposed to trust your banker. The banker done called her boyfriend and her boyfriend's crew to let them know that this lady was taking money out the bank and would have all this cash. They follow her, jump out the car and run to go try and take her purse from her. And thank God her husband came out there. But come to find out it was the banker that set all that up. So that's what I'm saying. Everybody's so quick to blame the baby mama. And yeah, she was goofy as hell for posting the location. I just don't understand the point of that. But he was, you know, silly for doing it too. But you don't know. You don't know who was outside that Roscoe's who could have made that call. It could have been an employee. Could have been the crackhead on the street. You just don't know. Sometimes people are placed in certain locations and told if you see anybody with money, if you see anybody come through, you call us and let us know we're right around the corner. Them dudes got there so quick from the time he was sitting there eating. It's like they were waiting for them to let their guard down, wait until the food is served. You eating and cutting into your waffles and eating the chicken and adding syrup. You're not thinking somebody's about to come in there and put a gun in your face and just shoot you. So folks had to be very, very mindful. People are saying there's an echo. Why? I don't know why it sounded like that. Is it still echoing now? I kind of turned it down. Hopefully that helps. Let me see. Did that help the echo? Is that better? Because I was kind of hearing it too. The audio is fine. No echo. Okay. Okay. No more. Okay. I turned it down a little bit. That might have been why. That's the one thing I hate when I'm shooting different styles of videos because I have to do different things and change like different levels and frequencies and shit and change the camera up. And then you forget what setting you use for what. So I apologize um, for that. So, um, yeah, so it's a lot. It's a lot going on um, in this world. But that situation was just really sad. My oldest like really took that personal. He's a fan of PMB. So as soon as it happened, he's like, do you see this? It's another rapper. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's messed up. It's crazy. But, you know, rest in peace to him. Um, again, I just wish him and his family prayers. Um, the baby's mother, you know, hopefully this will somewhat get people off of her case a little bit now that it's come out that he also posted his location. Um, but the whole thing is just really sad.